With the Pro Controller and the portability, it seems like the Switch is just primed for first-person shooters. Today, we're giving you our top five most wanted on the Switch. What's up, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. I've got Jake and Gabe here with me, and we are counting down the top five first-person shooters we want to see on the Switch. Let's kick things off right away with a game that is already out, the only game on this list that is already released, and it's a, it's a, it's a big one, Overwatch. And to be clear, we know that a lot of these might never happen. We understand that. This is just, if we can have things go our way, these are the five shooters we want on there. And Overwatch, I believe I am the one that has played it the most on here. I have played many, many hours of Overwatch. Um, I love it, and I think it would be great, especially if we can, like, Zach, here, let me paint a picture for you. We're all at the Switch Force headquarters next to each other like we were for launch. And yes. we all have Overwatch, so we all just uh, sit there, like, on the kitchen table and... I have my pro uh, controller. On the table? We're sitting on the table. Well, no, we're going to sit on the chairs. Come on. Come okay. on. Come on. Let me paint my picture without your silliness. No silly string here. All right. So we all have our switches on our kickstands. We all have the pro controllers in hands. And we're just there at playing like local uh, Overwatch rounds. There's a 3v3 mode. It'd be nice to play that against bots or against other people like uh, using Wi-Fi. Overwatch is such a great game. And although you two don't play it as much, I do feel that if you were to give it a chance, you would like it. Oh, I think definitely if it was on Switch, it would be something that I would get much more into. The fact that I could bring it with me anywhere, the fact that I could link up with you guys, the fact that I could link up uh, with people out here in L.A., I, I, it would be really good. And it, to give some validity, even though it's unlikely, uh, Overwatch director Jeff Kaplan said, I'm loving Switch. My second favorite gaming platform of all time is the 3DS. Getting Overwatch on the Switch is very challenging for us but we're always open-minded about exploring possible platforms. And, and just to el elaborate on that a little bit, I think the reason why it would be challenging for them is because it's like an online-only game. Yeah. That's, it's not like visual, like visually Overwatch would fit in perfect uh, on the Switch. It, the Switch sure. can definitely handle it. Um, I, I think it just becomes an issue is, uh, of, hey, this is online-only, and you know what do you do with that Like when you're not home or you're not near Wi-Fi? So probably not a whole lot. Um, but if they can somehow figure something out, I think that could be so, so great. Yeah, I think a lot of this is sales, uh, is determined by sales. Because if the Switch continues to just sell like gangbusters and, and you're coming into fall 2017, I think you're going to have a lot more third parties interested to port or put their titles out there. And why not? If you can make it happen you know, hardware-wise, why not throw Overwatch there? So if Nintendo was able to launch a successful online service this summer and then with the paid iteration coming this fall and it sells consistently, I think, maybe not Overwatch facility, but I think you may see, see some more of these. I hope so. That carries us to number four. Freeze. Which is the upcoming Borderlands 3. Now, this game is confirmed to be in the works. We don't have a date yet. But again, a game with a visual style that would most likely fit fine on Switch, and one that is so uh, alluring with with the Switch's hybrid nature because of the co-op focus. And, uh, and that's assuming that they go with the cel-shaded look again, which there's no reason why they wouldn't. It's kind of like the Borderlands signature look, but, you know, you know, we don't know. So, um, and also another reason Randy why... Randy Pitchford did show, just, just to let you know, Randy Pitchford, and, and it wasn't like, oh, uh, uh, you know, a trailer for the game, but he did show a character model done up in similar style that he said was part of their working process for Borderlands 3. Okay, So perfect. all signs point to that. To that. Um, but yeah, the, the cool thing about the Borderlands franchise specifically is that there are like little side quests that you can like go do and that would be great for on-the-go things. Uh, uh, like your little like small sessions while you're like commuting like on a train or something, not driving. So... Plus just the fact that you could go back and forth, single player, co-op, if they have that integration, you know, then it works when you're able to play online or able to play LAN. It works when you're by yourself. And again, it's just one of those games that would really fit that style and the, the, the Switch features so well. I wouldn't be surprised if this happened. Yeah, I think this one is doable. Yeah, I definitely think it is. Very nice. Number three. Son, you're special. You were born to do great things. We are moving right into Bioshock 4, which is a little bit less of a clear picture than the rest of our list, but one that I personally would love to see. Bioshock is my favorite franchise of all time, and I think a really 
really great campaign-based shooter is something that would elevate the Switch in the mind of those hardcore PS4, Xbox fanboys. Give the Switch a game that is is incredibly hyped and incredibly well-regarded, and you're going to go places. Plus, just, again, taking Bioshock with you wherever, that would be a dream for me. Jake is a big Bioshock fan. Jake, how would Huge you feel about, about him? Going not to Rapture or, or, or anything like that because you know whatever the next Bioshock game will probably be in a different world. But um, how, how are you feeling about that one? I I would love it, but I'm also kind of a little bit like I don't know if I would if it would de- deter like having it be on such a small screen and having it be because I think when you say a game on the go, you're just less immersed in the experience. So like something like Borderlands or something, um, if you're doing like a side quest or something, it's not super immersive and like requires a lot of like you know, like listening to storyline bits or, you know, whatever, almost more like a movie experience, um, like on the go play would be no problem. But for something that's more really heavily story driven and like experience driven and sights and sounds and surroundings driven, I, I don't know if I would, I don't know if it would detract at all playing it on the go. I mean, obviously when you play it at you home. Could to- yeah, you could totally just TV mode the whole thing. Right. So yeah, I guess, but this, the Switch kind of is... You know, inevitably people are going to play it on the go if it's on the if it's on the Switch. Like, there's um, not going to be people who just sit there and play it at home exclusively. I mean, there's going to be people I'm, who who like will use it as a handheld no matter what. I want to add an asterisk to this one uh, because I do feel like we get Bioshock news this year of some of some kind, like for like the new game. But I would totally be okay if it was just the 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 remasters of uh, one and two. I would yeah. totally be okay with that. I, I would love it, and I think. You know, ports are usually viewed negatively, but with the case of the Switch specifically, and maybe uniquely, the fact that it has the ability to go with you, I'm okay with ports because now I'm able to take games into places where I couldn't, and so, like, replaying Mario Sunshine, replaying Bioshock is a heck of a lot more appealing knowing that I have this unique ability to take it with me than if it was just like, oh, hey, guess what? Bioshock Remastered is on Steam, or Mario Sunshine is on Wii U. Right. Because it's almost like a whole new experience and, like, a... I don't know, like, you don't have to focus as much so, like, you can be distracted by your commute or whatever and still just enjoy the game for a second time. 100%. Now, we move on to number two. Which is one I am incredibly pumped for, and I... I feel like this one could be possible as well, and that is Star Wars Battlefront 2 releasing this fall. Um, it's going to feature the the new trilogy. It's going to feature the new characters. It's going to feature a single-player mode, making this a really fantastic Switch title because you've got the co-op, you've got the competitive, and you've got the single-player. It's able to mold and mix with whatever your lifestyle is. Um, and even some of those uh, missions that, that they had in the original where where you're basically doing, like, wave-based combat, there's enemies and enemies coming at you, that's, that also lends itself to being on the go. But, I mean, you're right. The fact that this one's going to have a campaign, it's exciting. And hopefully they build upon what they did with the original because the gameplay is so fun. It was just, yeah. like, pretty limited as far as, like, content goes. Well, for me also, why I like the idea of, of first-person shooters and specifically online first-person shooters on Switch is I'm someone that doesn't have a ton of hours to pour into these things. But if I could bring it with me, there's a whole lot more convenience. And I know it sounds silly, but even just like waiting for appointments or you know at the airport, being able to connect to the Wi-Fi and get a match in or even just rank up in co-op or something like that would be a an awesome chance for me to invest more time into these types of titles and be more invested in the online community, be more invested in the progression and the eventual prestige and and all of that where I can't do that or I can't seem to find the time to do that when it's tied to my television. You got any love for Battlefront, Jake? I think it'd be interesting. I mean, I didn't pour a bunch of hours into it, um, but I did play it and it was fun and I think being Darth Vader running around on your Switch in public would be pretty epic i have a question that's kind of, that's off topic but just about shooters in general do you want or think that like motion control would be involved in any of these at all for like aiming like in battlefront could you turn on like gyro scope to, to aim like in splatoon i personally no? don't want it I, i'm i'm okay but do you think they it make personally. it a, a, they integrate it at all or do you think it's just something that is just not used in third-party games as much i think it is a detriment to the perception of the titles to incorporate that. I think as soon as you do that, even if it's an option, people are going to think that it is a dumbed-down version. Even if it's not, it gives that perception. And and frankly, Splatoon is the only game that I have felt more comfortable in motion than in traditional controls, and Splatoon 2 is going to have that covered. I don't know that you need, you know, uh, 
EA or Activision or 2K or any of these these publishers or you know, developers, I guess, more like investing in creating a motion control system. I say just port it as it is, if you're able to do that, and give us traditional controls. Because, I mean, I don't know. Gyro is a, a, a nice feature on the switch but i don't feel it is a core functionality and it's not the wii where we're trying to highlight pointer controls so it's okay to omit that uh from these shooters and, and it makes them seem more solid it makes them seem more hardcore i think if you just go with the the normal setup sure i agree sweet and that takes it to number one Number one is a uh, a very a title that could go and be one of the greatest games ever, and a title that could disappoint. But I think I want to find out on the Switch that number one game, our most wanted first-person shooter on the new Switch, is Destiny 2. This is coming out this year. They have made some recent comments about how they're abandoning some of the uh, some of the stuff from the first game, and it looks like it's going to be much more of a new experience, like we've hoped. At least like I've hoped. And I would love this sort of game, if done right, in the sequel to be with you. Destiny, with the grinding, with the RPG elements, again with the ability to play co-op, solo, competitive. It's just, it seems like a match made in heaven. But unfortunately, I don't think it ever happens. Um, yeah, right. yeah. I, 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 on the, same for, for um, like, Battlefront. I don't think Battlefront or Destiny make the way to the Switch. But it would be fantastic if they, if they did. Like, you know, running strikes... Um, you know, on the go would be great. There's there's Wi-Fi everywhere now. Even like I live in a small town, and there's still Wi-Fi everywhere. So like I feel like that that's something that's becoming more and more normal. And uh, just like even being able to do some solo stuff that maybe your system can like save in the memory, and then once you connect to the internet again, you you get like all, all the bonus stuff. Who knows how they can uh, work it out? But I feel like Destiny Two would have the same problem that Overwatch has um, as far online as only. Yeah, yeah, the online only functionality. Yeah, and it's gonna be interesting to see. You know, it's hard to predict how likely any of these are to hit but we'll, we'll we'll find out i guess this fall the commitment level that ea and activision uh have to the console you know they have released and or committed to releasing uh you know skylanders and fifa and things like that 2k with nba will they be bringing their bigger titles over and i, I gotta say that probably a lot of it depends on the sales and if it continues to sell well i think we will see some of these not all of them but some of them and i hope that we do um, and if not this year, I hope that come spring 2018, we start to see more ports reaching Switch um, because, like we've mentioned many times, it would be our preferred way to play uh, given the, the multifaceted uh, portability. So what games are you hoping come to Switch in the first-person shooter genre? Which of these five do you think is most likely to come to Switch? We've got Overwatch, Borderlands 3, Bioshock 4, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and Destiny 2. Which would you want most? Which is most likely? And are there any others that we omitted that you think deserve to be in these spots? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on the latest and greatest from the Switch and us here at Switch Force. And to find out if any of these ever do get announced, E3 is only a couple months away, and maybe we will see a surprise Battlefront 2 coming to Switch announcement. But before we wrap up, pick one of these that you think is most likely to happen. Uh, by uh, um, Battlefront, Border Borderlands. I think Borderlands too. Yeah, uh, I mean Borderlands three, but Borderlands as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I my I would love B Battlefront. That would be fantastic this year, or Destiny. I think Overwatch could sneak its way in there. I, w I hope so. I love it. That would be that would be great. So yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day for myself, Jake, and Gabe. Switch Force out. <laughs>